Okay, well, welcome to the October 26th City Council Rules Select Committee. Um, I'm uh, required to uh, announce that you are being audio and video recorded. Uh, Laura, would you do okay. the roll call? Sure, Councilor Maori? Here. Member Simon? Here. Councilor Dwight? Nope. Of course, he's not here. Uh, Member Baskin. Here. And Councilor Foster. Here. Okay. So we do have a quorum. Um, is there any public comment? I don't see anyone here yet for public, any kind of public comment. Do you, Laura? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. So we have approval of the minutes of September 29th, 2021. Uh, the October 12th, we're, we're, we're going to table till next time. Move approval. Did you unmute? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, that was a second, yeah. Uh, that was a peace sign, which is good too. Okay, so um, Laura, could you roll call on approval of the minutes for September 29th? Councilor Mayori? Yes. Member Simon? Yes. Um, Member Baskin? Yes. And Councilor Foster? Yes. Okay, so the minutes have been approved and now we are on to Scope of authority for legislative, excuse me, legislative matters to amend items. Jim Nash just entered. I'm cute. And I'm going to recognize Councillor Nash. I, I also wanted to say um, a process note that if, if anyone felt, you know, they preferred the more familiar terms we we're using. Um, feel free to use those too. We'll just mix it up. Sorry for being late. That's okay, Councillor Nash. Um, uh, Councillor Dwight is not here, but we can start the conversation and he might have things to add if he arrives. Okay. So we're talking, yeah. We're talking about the scope of authority for legislative matters to amend items. So I'm only seeing a gray screen for you right now. I don't know if your camera is broken. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. We're just off. I was going to say the same thing. Thanks, Ezekiel. Ooh, I'm just a gray screen. You yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Now you're brown. Screen. Oh, you know what that is? Uh, I, was <laughs> in a I was in a meeting. I put tape over it. Because I was eating my lunch, it was I was like it was, it was it had it was the attorney general's meeting. I was like I eat my lunch. Is my camera on or not? I don't know. I put some tape on. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Clever, huh? So um, high tech. All right. I guess we want to. So um, <laughs> so, so Council Bash, I was saying, you know, I I'm taking the. Um, as as chair, I'm just going to recognize that you know. In, uh, anyone who wants to speak. So you should feel free to ask questions and participate at this point. Sure, I, 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 I'm, I'm here because I see two items that are very uh, of interest to me on the agenda and I, I, I appreciate that. Right. So whenever they're ready to talk about them, ready, I'm ready to go. Okay, so Laura, the scope of authority for legislative matters to amend items, was that uh, Councillor Dwight's? Um, that was Councilor item. Nash's item. Oh, was okay. That was Councilor Nash's. Okay. So um, perhaps we should start with a, um, Solicitor Seawald um, to get some framework for this. Thanks for joining us, Solicitor Seawald. You are quite welcome, Councilor. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the ability uh, to amend generally is controlled by the open meeting law notice requirements. That's really where the limitation comes in. Um, 
But let me just step back and say that, you know, legislative matters doesn't actually amend anything and recommends amendment. And it would be the city council that actually amends uh, something that comes onto the floor uh, unless legislative matters is placing before uh, the city council an amended version of what was provided to it, but it's a recommendation uh, on, on an amendment. So let me just get back to the open meeting law. The, the open meeting law uh, re requires that there be a list of the topics anticipated to be discussed. It's never about the outcome of what that discussion is going to be. So as long as the, the discussion remains on the topic that is listed in the, um, in the notice, there's a, a wide latitude to amend. Let me give you an example. Um, a recent attorney general's uh, determination that, uh, that a select board that was making, that had given notice that it was going to make two appointments to a particular board had also intended to discuss expanding that board with associate members uh, and went ahead and did all of that. The, the attorney general's office said, well, you properly noticed the fact that you were going to make appointments, but you did not properly notice the fact that you were going to uh, vote to expand the board. So, um, you, know, the, uh, you know, as to the first issue, they could have rejected the appointments that were proposed and appointed other people. That would have been within the scope of the appointment that was listed uh, on, the, you know, on, the, uh, on the notice, but they couldn't move then into something completely separate, which was expanding the membership of the board. So you can see how those are two totally different topics and two totally different groups of residents might have interest in those two topics. Um, so that's the limit of, of the ability of a, a board or, a, or the council or a committee to uh, amend uh, the item to, that was identified to be discussed in the notice of, of meeting. Thank you for that. Who has questions? Councillor Nash. Yeah, this is interesting. So uh, uh, Attorney Seawald, the, um, so the legislative matter like the rest of the committees can recommend an amendment then it goes back to council and it is council that has the, the power to amend. Did I have the that right council or? always has the power to amend what comes before it. It could right. re-amend what legislative matters has proposed to the full council. It always has the authority to amend if it's within the scope of the notice that was given. And, and again, the notice requirement is focused on the topics to be discussed, not in any way, foreshadowing what the outcome of that discussion is going to be. And, you know, these discussions can take unexpected turns at unexpected moments, and that's fine. Um, what the public is entitled to is to know the topics about that are anticipated to be discussed. Okay. Thank you. Um, Member Baskin. So just to make sure I understand it, if a topic is listed on the agenda, there should be no issue with amending or approving or rejecting or anything in relationship to that topic. Right. But if they body were to like then decide to make a motion on an entirely different topic, that would be in violation of open meeting law because yeah. that topic wasn't listed on the agenda. That's right. Great. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I got and, it. And you know, there are situations where a, a topic that was not anticipated can be discussed. But unless it's an emergency, the attorney general has advised, you know, to table them until, you know, notice is given. Um, so anyway, generally speaking, yes, you're correct. Um, uh, Vice Chair Simon. Okay. I wanted to ask Councillor Nash actually what his question was regarding uh, what the rules already state about committee amendment process, which gives legislative matters the ability to review anything that's gone to any committee uh, from the council and the right to be the last recommender uh, in the process. 
So the, it seemed pretty clear to me. So I was wondering what the question was in terms of either what was missing or what you didn't like. So the, so the issue is, so um, there have been times where things, uh, items go to legislative matters and legislative matters has amended the item and that is the language that goes to council. That council isn't saying, oh, that amendment from legislative matters are from, you know, it came from community resources. Let's, you know, that we're voting to include those as part of the, the item when it's at council. And I think that, um, yeah, and, and um, that, you know, more recently uh, there was a uh, last spring there was a recommendation that had to do with uh, parking in Leeds that, um, and the recommendation out of the Transportation and Parking Commission was for seasonal parking. It went to legislative matters and the committee uh, decided to amend it so that it applied year round. So what got to council would have, was no longer a discussion about do we fold this in this recommendation from a, a legislative matters, which, you know, I, I might have gone along with it based on their argument, but that, um, but that the council didn't have, the whole council didn't have the opportunity to weigh in on that. It creates a legislative obstacle because now you're arguing for something that was taken out by four other counselors, as opposed to the entire council weighing in to say, Oh, that was a good idea that came out of legislative matters. And so um, I, you know, it, it sounds like what um, uh, Attorney Seawald is saying is that the rules are actually already there and match my interpretation. And that, um, that maybe we've kind of misunderstanding um, the, the scope that legislative matters has. That's well, I, I mean, isn't there discussion at the council meeting about what was changed? I um, mean, you know, it, at council, there was some discussion, but I'll, I'll tell you it. So the, um, when you, when, when legislation gets to the council and, um, and there, they, I just want to say there was already um, some um, concern how do I say this? That you know, the public was was engaged around this particular issue. So re-inviting a discussion that's already happened when you really want to deal with what's in front of you, and um, and so yeah. So my point is that we would then have to re-engage in the discussion about the amendment, and it would need to go on the floor to take it out rather than just simply discuss it. I think the way to, that it should happen is just the way that Attorney Seawall laid it out. It's a recommendation. It's, it's clearly an addition and that council considers it and council, full council votes to accept that recommendation. So I'm gonna just chime in because I was gonna bring up that very example, Councilor Nash. Um, that was a learning moment for me and I was, um, I remember kind of being a little perplexed by the process there and, and I had the same questions. Uh, I understood making a recommendation that was different, but I, was, I would have assumed that we were going to send the original language at least with um, any amendments. And I guess that would be my question for Solicitor Seawald. What, what would that look like? In other words, so, if you wanted, if, if legislative matters wanted to make an amendment, they would send full council the recommendation, but they would maintain the language, you know, in the screen share or whatever, you'd see the original language, and then you would see the suggested amendments. Is that, and I don't think that's what happened. That's why I'm curious. Okay. Uh, just understand that, that this is all however you want it to be. Okay, legislative matters is a, a, a creature of this particular city council and its rules. So whatever you want that process to be is what it should be. Um, so that's really what you want to determine here. There's no obligation to send over 
um, the amendments and show the amendments, there's no, I mean, if that's not what the rules require. So in other words, what I mean by that is your rules could require either that, that legislative matters send over what was originally filed with them with the track changes or some other indication of what changes were recommended at legislative matters, or it could simply allow legislative matters to simply send over what it thinks the legislation should be. Uh, but that's purely policy question for the council because you've created this, this entity we call legislative matters. Now you, you define how it operates. As long as the amendments either way are not outside of the scope of the original notice at legislative matters. And again, don't forget that we, when you get to council, there's going to be another notice posted and, presum and uh, presumably attached to whatever document came from legislative matters. Which brings me to one other point, okay? We all seem to be revolving or, you know, um, hooking, hooking our wagon to this whole issue of um, what was proposed and what was approved, okay? We don't have to attach any documents or provide any preview of what's going to be recommended on a topic. We attach documents to our notices of meeting, our posting, because it's good practice and it's open government, but the law doesn't require that. So it, you know, if you wanna discuss um, a particular topic, um, it, it could come into the, into the city council as a blank slate and, and, and a proposed amendment could be presented on the floor for the first time as far as the public is concerned. It's not, and I'm not being very articulate here, I think, but I hope you're following my line here. Just because someone attached a document saying we're going to um, increase the membership on a particular committee by two doesn't mean that that's the proposal. The question before the, the, the council is, should we increase the, the membership on this committee or not? Just because somebody submitted a proposal for two doesn't mean you can't do three or four. That's just a proposal. And we've attached that proposal because it's what you know, uh, initiated the process and we wanna be open about what's being proposed ahead of time, but that's something we do, you know, above and beyond what the open meeting law requires. So again, you know, we're talking about topics, not any specific proposal, because any proposal on that topic would be within the, within the scope of the notice. Mm -hmm. Councilor Nash? Yeah, I, I just want to say that we've been operating, you know, for as long as I've been on council with um, legislative matters operating with the, you know, the power to amend and that um, on occasion has done that. And therefore the legislative, that it becomes a, um, yeah. So things have come to council with, uh, that have been different than what has come through the, the pipeline. And that is what's presented to council, not the opportunity to say this was recommended by attorney Seawald and legislative matters and we ask that you fold it in. Um, and I, I, I just wanna say that I think that's the way things should operate. I, I don't think that we should have a committee of, of, of four counselors that has the, the power uh, they're, they're not elected to be in those seats to, um, to uh, actually um, amend legislation in, in a sometimes significant way without the full council weighing in. I am all for legislative matters. If it's, for, if, if it's a, a, a committee made up of, uh, of maybe, you know, people who've been on council the longest or that their job is to work with, um, the city solicitor to make sure the make sure that the the legislation is in order before it goes to council. That they've had attorney Seawald, he has had a chance to look it over to make sure that it lines up with 
you know, our existing ordinance or where it might create problems. And that those thoughts are then brought to council and um, become part of our deliberations. So um, yeah, that's my stand on it. And I'd like to see our rules line up with, with making that happen. And Thank you. Uh, and maybe Bastion. they already do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Member Baskin. I guess I feel like it it's a little it feels a little moot to me in that the legislation that comes through legislative matters is still just a proposal. Like it's not been enacted. Legislative matters has no power to enact anything. And so if something came that was amended by legislative matters, the full council could just amend it back to what it was previously or amend it to something completely different, right? Like there's no Legislative matters is not doing anything binding in the current process. So I guess it feels like a little bit semantic to me whether they're amending or recommending an amendment. I think either is fine, um, but it. I guess I'm curious the, the, the weight of it just because it seems like the, the buck still stops at the full council. Right, Solicitor Seawald and then I think we need to take one step back from legislative matters because generally, as I understand it, legisl proposed legislation gets filed with the council. Okay, So the council then has the proposed legislation, which it then refers to legislative matters. And it comes back from legislative matters. Um, it, it may come back from legislative matters with changes, but it's not like the councilor has no way to figure out whether there have been changes because the councilor had a copy of the, the legislation before it went to the legislative matters. So the only question I see here that, that Council Nash is raising is whether we should require legislative matters to specify in, you know, in writing exactly what changes it has proposed and recommended to the legislation that came to it from the from the city council. And if that's done, then the council can always, as member Baskin said, just say, no, we don't like these changes that legislative matters has proposed. We're going to reject them and pass the original legislation, or as member Baskin say, make other changes to the legislation and pass it. So, um, so I'm gonna take the liberty of chiming in here. Am I frozen? Uh -oh. Yes. <laughs> We can hear you, but not see you moving. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I think, I think my internet is not working properly. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. yes. Oh, excuse me. I'm having internet issues. I'm going to leave my camera off for a second. Um, I, I hear that, and I just wanted to, to take the liberty to weigh in because of, of the example Councilor Nash gave. And I, I feel like there's... You know, the, uh, practically speaking with counselors, you, you know, there's weeks in between these meetings. And I kind of felt like what came out of that legislative uh, matters meeting around the parking and leads was a fundamentally different beast. It wasn't, you know, seasonal parking to me is much different than all, all you know, year round parking. And so it, it did kind of feel like we were limiting the options. And I understand that we, you know, counselors had, could have gone back and checked uh, the original referral, but I just, I felt uncomfortable with that. And I felt like as someone who disagreed with it, that, that the, the kind of platform for me to express my disagreements was kind of, you know, whittled down because now we already had it in an amended form. Yes, um, excuse me, um, Vice Chair Simon. So uh, respectfully, that's what discussion and debate and the voting is for. And it's, it sounds like this passed and some people didn't like that it passed. And that's a question of just getting enough votes, right? So the form in which an idea comes to you, you know, shouldn't predispose a particular outcome. And so if you've got this language that comes before you and some people have a problem with it, then you have discussion about it and you try to persuade people to take it out. And if you have the votes, it comes out. And if you don't have the votes, it stays in. So I, you know, I, 
I have to agree with, I think, Member Baskin about this, that it, it, it looks like, you know, you can do... You, you can do whatever you want, and and the the, in my opinion, the form of the information doesn't preclude you from doing whatever you choose to do. I'm just going to answer back to that. That what I'm saying is that it felt like a fundamentally different thing to be talking about all year round parking. So then, for a counselor to have to remember that maybe or come up with the idea on the spot that you know or whatever that seasonal parking is an option, it just feels to me like. Um, I would prefer to have, you know, the thought process more represented when it went to full council. Um, this is a practical matter. There's a lot of item, items, you know, councilors are overworked and to, to say that we can, you know, that we can, um, you know, because it, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of narrowing the focus before it gets to council. And I don't think that other um, committees do that with their recommendations. Yes, Councilor Foster. Yeah, and, um, my thought isn't fully formed, but I'm going to go ahead and chime in and hope it forms as I go. Um, Councillor Nash, I appreciate you bringing this up and, and um, Councillor Maori to your thoughts as well. And I agree that that, as amended, that was a fundamentally different piece of legislation than had worked its way through the process. And having been on transportation and parking and the public, um, input in what was determined with DPW and DPW's practical concerns and police and the neighborhood and all of that was for one type of legislation. And then it did come back to us fundamentally different um, without the input, or I'm not aware of what input um, the, the main players that needed to enact and enforce that legislation had. I don't, I wasn't at that legislative matters meeting, which is, um, you know, I could have been there. I honestly was caught very off guard at the scope of the amendment. Um, had I known, I would have made a point of being there. Um, so I don't, I don't know how that went down. I don't know if, if um, parking and police and DPW and, and all of those people were a part of that amended process. And yes, it's true. By the time it came back to council, we did have the opportunity on that to, to remove the amendment there was an extra pressure and, and not that we need to write rules for unique situations, but there was an extra pressure with this because it was a seasonal parking change designed to alleviate seasonal issues and something had happened where it hadn't gotten on the legislative matters agenda when it was intended to or DPW wasn't invited to the original meeting. Right. So they didn't feel like they could act on this legislation. So it got pushed out a month. And by the time it came to us, it was relatively time sensitive if we we're going to address actually the problem that this whole ordinance was designed to address. So that that's a lengthy backstory to how this happened. And I know we can't write council rules for, you know, moments like this. Um, but to Councillor Nash's point and Councillor Mary's point, that was a pretty significant change. And so um, you know, I think what we want to consider is if Legislative Matters is going to propose amendments, kind of thinking in advance of how we'll handle that as a council. And Solicitor Seawald, your suggestion of, of if there's an amendment, putting track changes on and highlighting the amendment at the council meeting so that we're all looking at both the original and the amended proposal may have been what that moment needed. Member Baskin. Yeah, I think I'm certainly open to that proposal, um, more so than saying that legislative matters shouldn't be able to amend, which I think is sort of stripping away that committee's authority um, in a way that doesn't feel useful to me. But I think that the, I like, I mean, I would think it would be best practices that um, that legislative matters would sort of speak to what they amended and why I and that if they didn't, other counselors would sort of push the members of that committee to speak to that. I'm not opposed to putting something about that sort of in the rules, but it does strike me that this is a, a situation where counselors felt unable to take up their authority effectively. And I don't know that, again, I'm thinking about is this a rules issue or a culture issue? Um, and I'm curious about the sort of feeling of being unable to change this sort of already moving train. Um, I can answer to that, but I will let uh, let Solicitor Seawald um, speak first. I'm, I'm 
I'm getting just a, a sense that one of the problems here is that the, the, the membership of legislative matters is so close to the vote needed to pass it at the council that, that one of the questions I have is, should we reduce to three the number of members on legislative matters um, so that you're not getting to the council and all you need is one vote? And you know, if you know you have that vote, then all you do is call the question, get two thirds vote on that, and you know you're, you're on your way. And so, if the if the legislative matters committee was smaller, it wouldn't feel like it, it's a, it's already a done deal by the time it gets to the council. Yeah, um, member um, Simon, uh, Vice Chair Simon, excuse me. Thanks. Yeah, I had suggested in one of our earliest meetings to go to an odd number for, for all of the um, subcommittees, three would be appropriate, and then and every member could serve on, on one. Um, but um, uh, it, I think what you have with legislative matters is a subcommittee that's actually acting like a subcommittee. And the fact that other council committees haven't done this, even though it's within their authority, within the rules, every, every subcommittee can do this. They may have chosen not to, or they didn't understand what the rules would allow them to do, or they didn't have the inclination, whatever. But legislative matters is actually acting like a, an actual subcommittee that's implementing the authority given to them under the rules to to legislate. And you know, I I, I hear what you're saying on process. I, I there are certainly things you can do to say, well, when you send your written recommendation, because every council subcommittee is supposed to send a written report. I don't know if that happens, but it's in the rules that, that every council subcommittee is supposed to send a written report. I mean, that written report could have it exactly in the format that's just been discussed about original language and proposed changes um, to solve the problem. If, if, if in an actual meeting, you can't get to that, uh, it, it, it seems like a pretty simple fix. Until you're on council. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Right. I was just going to take a moment to be super honest with uh, Member Baskin about the cultural issue. And yes, there is that. Um, I will. It was a real learning moment for me. And I, I, if I could go back, I would do things differently. But I was in a position where I would. My only choice was to vote against a parking uh, ban that my constituents all wanted. And so I just felt. Um, and the way things go, you know, sometimes people don't understand the nuances. So the only thing that's left is a soundbite that I voted against something they wanted. But what ended up happening is none of them wanted the seasonal parking. So um, it's something I'm going to revisit with the new council because the original ask of the constituent for the parking was that it be seasonal. And, the, and the, the, just the way it plays out in the situation, it's a much different beast and is really hurting the renters there to have it all year round. Um, and so, yeah, it's a learning moment and it was a cultural moment. And I will own that, that I, I could have um, firmly, you know, I could have voted against the recommendation and I could have firmly represented the next, uh, you know, in, in full council. And I, did, I didn't choose to do so, and I will now. Um, the only thing I will say is, I don't know if those cultural moments are gonna go away because there's, there's just that, you know, um, there's just that, you know, when you're deferring to, you know, two of the councilors had been are very senior, um, including the council president. So I, 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 there was, you know, deferring and um, and reacting on the, in the, but you know, maybe I, I think there's other, I mean, there's other options too around the culture, and maybe that's a topic we could talk about. You know, I, I think a more, you know, more thorough onboarding of new councilors. So that you're not in that moment going, is this, you know, you know, trying to push back against people who've been doing it for eight years and not sure of, you know, of uh, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I think it, I'm really glad you said that because I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm really thinking about other ways to address this as well. Thank you. Yeah, Member Baskin. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for those reflections because I think that the I'm again I'm not averse to sort of changing the process with legislative matters but I I do kind of think that's that's dealing with this specific situation rather than the underlying issue 
And I, I think that I'm, you know, it's not on our agenda today, but I would love to put on thinking about how we orient counselors um, and enshrining something about that in the rules, just because the, it, it's hard to take up your authority when you don't know what your authority is and what you're able to do and what, you know, I think there's, there's so much in that. There's so much that I've learned about the rules from this committee, certainly. And I think that, that others have learned about the rules from really delving into them as well. And so it's just, um, I don't know, the, it's interesting. Um, and I'd like to figure out ways for all counselors, like new and more experienced to feel like they have um, space to, to speak up in the meetings. Yes, oh, um, Laura. Oh, uh, you're muted, Laura. I just wanted to share that I got, am I still muted? That I got a text from um, Councillor Dwight saying that it's like Lita's, Lita's birthday. Uh -huh. And he offered his regrets a few weeks ago. I'm afraid I didn't remember. Thank you for that, Laura. It's a big one. <laughs> oh. Gordy? Um, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that. I, um, you know, we can revisit that at the end of this agenda, identifying remaining topics, because I will just, I, I'm compelled to also say that if we really want to encourage new demographics to be represented in council, I think part of that is, is how we onboard and what kind of culture we create, since not everyone will have like, you know, eight hours a day to go over the rules and be comfortable with that culture. So I think that's really interesting. But I'm gonna stop there before we, I get off my own agenda here. But um, anyone else wanna comment on this scope of authority for legislative matters to amend items? Councilor Nash. Yeah, so I think we've kind of solved this by just talking about it. And we realize that the, the rules are actually lining up with uh, what we would like to see. It's, um, that maybe some other counselors' interpretations of these rules have <laughs> have led us to where we've uh, we've gone, and so um, I um, yeah I am uh, educated tonight and appreciate that. So I, I'm ready to move on to another topic. And Great. Thank you for uh, covering this. Yeah, th thank you for that. Um, any other comments? If not, we'll move on to. A structure of city council meetings with the planning board around zoning matters. Uh, yeah, is, was this um, Councilor Nash's as well? No, this or was, was, this was me too. Okay, I just didn't know if Councilor Dwight uh, possibly put that one. In. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, on the, as far as this one is concerned, that um, again, this gets to the scope of legislative matters that we often. Um, send a uh, to legislative matters, uh, uh, particularly items that have to do with zoning. Um, and they hold joint heat, they like to hold, they, they will have a public hearing as part of our process. And they often have a joint meetings with, with the planning board. And um, that, that I personally, uh, it, as somebody who had, at times has been part of legislative matters and other times not. I think it, it, it's appropriate that when we have those joint meetings that, um, that I would like to see the full council be able to engage. Because I think there's, there's to, to have the legislative side meeting up with the side that actually um, you know, implements and has, a, you know, that to have that discussion, I think it's a learning experience for all of the counselors, and that um, I, I, I just, I've, whenever I've met with planning board in in those types of settings, it's always been super interesting and and enlightening, because often zoning can be really dull, but in that type of meeting where we have people in the room who are about to experience the change. And we as the legislators are there listening, you know, to the planning board members who can talk about, yeah, this is how it will play out. Here's how we're probably going to implement this. You know, I read it this way, that I, I think that's a really valuable discussion that we should always want to invite when we're putting zoning matters um, uh, before council. And before, you know, both the planning board and 
and us because both bodies are voting on it. So um, that's that's my thought on it. And um, that uh, I know some counselors have interpreted that differently. <laughs> so. Solicitor Seawall, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nash for explaining that. Well, let, me, let me just back up for a second. Um, this, the law requires in a city that both the city council and the planning board hold public hearings on any zoning amendment, either separately or together. Okay. The law also allows the city council to designate that function to a committee. Okay. That's totally up to you as counselors, whether you're going to delegate that to a committee or reserve it to the full council. The, pr the presumption it's, is that it's the full council and only upon delegation is a committee authorized to do that. Um, and then, then the question is, are you going to have the full planning board and the full city council meeting together? Uh, I think in my experience, the, the joint meetings have been very uh, important for counselors because they're not doing this planning stuff all the time. And, you know, to hear from the planner, the plan planning department and the planning board is valuable for the counselors. Um, so, but again, that's completely within the discretion of your rules on how that's going to be handled. Uh, but both entities must hold a public hearing. Uh, member Baskin. I don't see, but please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see in the current rules that authority designated, delegated to legislative matters anywhere to hold those joint hearings with the planning board. So it seems to me that the current rules, if the sort of presumption is that it's held with the full council, I think it should be held with the full council in the current rules. The, the council could certainly delegate it on a case by case basis that comes in, they decide to have the legislative matters or some other committee, they could, you know, the other thing that is that the council could form in a separate committee just to, to hold hearings for zoning. I mean, the, the, again, the slate is completely blank. As long as the hearing is held by either the council or a committee designated for that purpose, then it's totally up to, the, up to you. Um, Councilor Foster. It seems to me that this might be part of the larger question discussion that we occasionally have around counselors participating in committee meetings, because when this is referred to a joint legislative matters planning board meeting, really, this is about can counselors participate in committee meetings. Um, so am, am I am I correct with that, Councilor Nash? I mean, or is yeah, your well, little, in, like, in this particular case. I, I, I understand that um, that would apply to you know, typical meetings for, you know, committee meetings. I, uh, but in this particular um, situation where, where things are before the planning board, as, as uh, city solicitor Seawald has pointed out that, um, yeah, it's really helpful for counselors to get in the weeds with, you know, and, and be part of that discussion. So, um, you know, ideally I would just like it be, to be an option for counselors who are interested in the particular legislation, because it may be in their ward and um, that, uh, but they may not be on the committee. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that we find out a way, we can figure out a way where, you know, if a counselor it, it wants to put in the effort and is interested in some of the matters that are before that meeting, that they be able to also be part of that discussion as um, as if they were colleagues uh, part of that committee. That's what I, and also that, you know, this is not to say that that, you know, a counselor can come in and then, you know, have a vote. It's simply saying that as far as that discussion between the two bodies that, you know, that a planning board member can show up and be part of it and so can a counselor. And then when it comes time to vote, that curtain is drawn, you know, that line is drawn and that the committees take their own vote. And so that's really what it's about for me. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Nash. Uh, Solicitor Seawald. 
I, I just was also want to point out that uh, that I've revisited this issue of counselors showing up at committee meetings and and um, and because I, I think that the open meeting law guide is very confusing on this issue. What it says is that that you can show up at a meeting, but you can't deliberate. But we know deliberation includes expression of an opinion, even if no one responds to that opinion um, among a quorum of the body. So if uh, if you have a four member legislative matters committee and one or two more counselors show up, uh, is that a violation? I have clarified with the attorney general's office that it is not a violation if the counselor who shows up at a committee meeting is not treated any differently in that committee by that committee than any other member of the public. And what I mean by that is that uh, counselors do not give up their First Amendment rights to speak and be heard uh, just because they've become counselors. And so a counselor can participate in a public hearing held by the planning board and a, and a committee of the city council in exactly the same manner, manner that any other citizen of this community is entitled to address that, that committee. And so uh, all the counselors can participate in legislative matters if the council decides to uh, um, you know, to go to continue to have legislative matters hold these hearings other councils can participate but just not as committee members they're participating as members of the public so they are entitled to be heard in the same manner uh, as anybody else uh, member baskin so just to clarify does that mean that if a committee was said that members of the public could only speak in public comment Counselors who aren't in that committee could participate in public comment, but could not participate in other ways. But if a committee said, we're recognizing all members of the public in our discussion on this agenda item, then counselors could be recognized in the same way. You're, you're correct. and But let me just make sure we understand that what we're talking here is not about a meeting. It's about a public hearing. And in a public hearing, the public has the right to be heard. It's not the largesse of the chair that gives the public the right to be heard in a public hearing. Got it. But uh, I was applying this beyond the public hearing into beyond the public hearing. You're hearing. exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, right. great. Thank you. So, like tonight, Solicitor Seawald, where I think I'm just wielding my benevolent power by letting Councilor Nash you know, have a back and forth with us. It's Thank not you. a public hearing. <laughs> There's also not a quorum of the uh, of the council here, so I'm not concerned about it. My antenna did go up uh, until I realized that uh, uh, Councilor Dwight wasn't here. And it could be that you would just open it up to any member of the public who wants to speak to these issues, and that's fine. You're the chair, and you, yeah. you you recognize those who can speak to the committee. Um, okay. But what you can't do is just allow you know, invite all the rest of the counselors to speak and participate, not let anybody else speak, uh, right. that wouldn't be permitted. Got it, that's very helpful, thank you. Uh, Councilor Nash. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm starting to better understand the, um, the, the how things get stuck here. Um, yeah, and I, the fact that, it, like uh, uh, Attorney Seawald is pointing out, it, it is the hearing process that, um, so, yeah, you know, I think I, I, I'd like to think about this a little more and, um, and maybe have some discussion with Attorney Seawald to better define what, it, what in particular I'm asking for. I mean, I think I've stated it, but um, I think figuring out the, the, uh, the legislative um, language to make it happen, uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk to Attorney Seawald further about that. Um, Member Baskin. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit of a stick in the mud here. I think I, um, I'm still confused that I don't feel like the council has delegated authority to the legislative matters to have those joint meetings with the planning board. Like there hasn't, at least to my knowledge, been like a vote where the council said we're delegating this to legislative matters. Like they might refer a piece of legislation, but I don't think that council has been appropriately delegating 
the authority to hold those joint hearings to legislative matters. So I'd love to know more about that sort of piece of things, um, just because it, I, I would feel more comfortable if either the council was holding those or the council was formally delegating those to legislative matters. But it, it does seem to me like we're in a little bit of a gray area with how those have been operating right now. But maybe I'm totally wrong, so. For Seawald. Just wanna be clear, it's not an all or nothing proposition. So every time that the council uh, refers for, a, for to legislative matters to hold the public hearing, it is delegating that to the to legislative matters on that instance, in that instance. And if something else comes along that the council decides it wants to hold the public hearing itself, it could certainly do that. Right. Uh, but I don't think that the city council has to determine ahead of time that all zoning is gonna go to a, a committee for hearing. I'm gonna step in because I, I, that's interesting to me because my, my assumption was that we, or I, I, I guess what I've been told um, is that we have to refer, uh, we have to refer items to the you know, um, zoning or legislative items to legislative matters. There is a rule to that effect, but that doesn't mean that you have to refer it for the public hearing that's required under the Zoning okay. Act. So Those are two different things. To to legislative matters. Unless, unless there's a, uh, a motion to suspend the rule requiring oh, uh, referral. Uh, what we're asking. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I think, the distinction that I'm not clear. I think I know that the zoning ordinances have been referred to legislative matters. What I'm not sure is have has the authority to hold those public hearings been referred to legislative matters? Like, has that been a motion that the council has been voting on to refer away that authority? Because it's not to my recollection, but also I, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of this by any matter. Um, but I'm just curious. It seems to me like this might be a case where that, that authority has sort of been like informally delegated to legislative matters without that actually being a motion that happens. And so one solution might be that if that actually is supposed to be a motion, then there's space for um, the council to deliberate whether it wants to hold a specific public hearing or whether it would like legislative matters to hold that public hearing. But it seems like right now, to my recollection, that step has kind of been being skipped and legislative matters has just been holding the public hearings without explicitly getting the authority from the full council. Well, I, I think we, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, Council Nash, go ahead. <laughs> uh, that, uh, yeah, I, so, I, yeah, we, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm getting hungry, I need to eat something, uh, that, uh, yeah, we've, we've kind of, we've been deferring, you know, this legislative matters has been the body that uh, traditionally holds the hearing with, with the planning board when there are joint uh, meetings and holds the hearing for council. And also in, um, and Attorney Seawald, you're usually part of those hearings, correct? Depends on what the chair of legislative matters thinks is something that I need to be there for. Uh, so I'm not always there, no. Okay. Yeah, so, um, hmm. I, I, you know, there's, uh, Councillor Dwight has referred to legislative matters as the last bite at the apple. And that, um, and that, and that, um, it, it, I think there's been times where the bite has been too big, and I think that um, that, in my view, that uh, that the apple, that legislators matters role is much more about polishing the apple before it goes to council, and you know, and that's part of the reason I think legislative ma matters makes sense for much, many of these. Uh, these zoning hearings, because the legislation, it, you know, it's coming from the planning department who's having a hearing and then it's, it's well, actually it goes to us, correct? Goes to us, then it gets sent to planning and, um, but it goes to planning either simultaneously or typically before legislative matters. No, you're shaking your hand. Yeah, so anyway, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm just kind of rambling here and I'm going to stop, but 
<laughs> well, Councilor Nash, I just want to say, and I'll let Solicitor Seawald can uh, speak to that too. But if you're if you're planning on going, I um, I just wanted to represent and name. I know since Councilor Dwight isn't here, I will just name that the last legislative matters meeting. Um, an item had gone to community resources first. And so all the public comment had gone there. Yeah. And I will just say that I felt disoriented as a legislative matters member, because I, I actually really rely on, um, you know, and like to hear the public comment um, and the minutes weren't out yet and all that. So I'm not saying I have a solution, but I, I see the, the tension, the dynamic tension there because I felt less, uh, you know, confident about uh, my vote uh, to recommend because I didn't, um, I hadn't gone to the community uh, resources meeting and, right. and heard the comment. Now in the future, I will make a point of going to the community resources so I hear the comment, but then you're doubling meetings and it gets tricky. I'm not saying I have a solution, but I did want to represent that because I, um, and one other thing Councilor Dwight did say about that was something which I don't quite understand about um, that part of the legislative matters requirement is, is, is public uh, comment on the record. And so that those public comments at community resources would not be registered as in the public record on that item. I don't know, I might be misrepresenting that. But I just felt like I should put that out there. And then uh, we will let you eat through soon, Councillor Nash though. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Foster. Councillor Nash, you feel free to eat on camera or stick some tape over it. Uh, yeah. it actually, I, I'm, I'm running to PEs with my nephew. Okay. And then I'm coming back and then I'm doing a campaign meeting. And so, ah, we'll see how okay. far. yeah, okay. things are hopping right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. And, thank you, um, and thank you for all your work. Um, and um, have, a, have a great night. Thank you. Thank Hi, you Councillor. So, Councilor Mary, if it's okay, I can speak to that a little yeah. bit, which I guess is going to get to, I don't know if it might get to a larger discussion about how we handle things, but that was a, that was a zoning change. And right. the purpose of the committees, right, of community resources and of legislative matters are so different. Um, and so I had done significant outreach to bring constituents to the community resources meeting to get their questions answered and to learn more about this piece of legislation. And so it was really kind of a, a large group conversation with Carolyn Mesh. And so by the time it went to legislative matters, I personally did not do a ton of outreach around that meeting. And that was, um, you know, I, I fell down on that. I could have done that differently, but also by the time it got to that meeting, people were like, yeah, I, I got it. I get what this is about. And so then, you know, that that was me as a conduit between constituents and, and the committee. But at the same time, by the time it got to where it was going to be finalized as a piece of legislation, the people who had a stake in it had asked their questions and had their say. So that's tricky. I, I don't have an answer for it, but that's sort of what that's what happened there. Right. And I will just say that, you know, I think it's because it was just we, we did something a little differently. I, in the future, I would be more perked up for legislative matters. So that's something it wasn't it wasn't in your purview to bring folks there. And in fact, it's a little bit about trusting your, you know, your fellow counselors in the fact, you know, that you had done that. And I could I could call you and ask you about that. I could have if I had thought of it or, you know, I think it's not it's not that I think that needed to change. But I just noticed that disorientation because the practical matter is you get, you, public comment doesn't always follow in the same rate throughout the process from each subcommittee to full council. And so if you really want to you know, be on the pulse of public uh, feeling, then you, then you do have to, to um, plug in there. And um, Solicitor Steele, Steele, I also had a question, well, and you can talk as well, but I don't want to get you know, too heady about it, but you know, this happened with finance too. It does beg the question, like you had kind of uh, intuited that not all uh, municipalities have legislative matters. So I guess, I, you know, I, I always want to regroup to like what, you know, with these the you know, public hearings and the planning board, like what, what, you know, what is, what was the, the idea behind legislative matters and, and if it's something that not every municipality has, I'm curious about that. Well, I, I think this speaks to the bigger issue of what committees generally are for. Okay. And, I, you know, and, you know, I think it came to a point where um, not all counselors can be involved in everything 
and all the time. And so we had to start delegating to committees some of the fact finding, some of the background work, and other counselors were either going to have to do independent work or were going to have to rely on their 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 uh, um, you know other counselors who sit on these committees to advise them. Um, and you know if you are going to start doing this and and um, and as as this th this harkens back to one of the early meetings of this this committee that I was at, where somebody pointed out that the public doesn't realize that the place to be is at the committees, not at the council. And I would parenthetically say, including this committee. I mean, where is everybody who would want to weigh in on everything we're talking about at this committee? Okay, this is the place that people should be showing up. And the reason that it broke down to committee is because there's so much work to be done that the councils can't all do it all. And so that's why we have to rely on committees. I would also point out that we're talking about two different things when we're talking about zoning hearings and regular committee work, okay? Regular committee work is one, you know, is in, in one bucket and zoning hearings are a very specific thing. And so I don't, I, I, I urge you not to lump zoning hearings with committee work generally. And uh, because, you know, other councils don't necessarily have that ability to participate in just general committee meetings the way they do in hearings, due process hearings. So uh, that's all I wanted to point out. And if you had a question, I'll... Did Thank you have you. another question? Is there... Oh, I thought you said you wanted to ask me a question. Oh, first, well, the, uh, well, the question was that larger question, which you, you, you did answer, which was, you know, I guess legislative matters to me is a lot, you know, like finance in that ultimately all the councils have a lot invested in, in understanding it. So there's this practical issue, which you kind of felt if there's something major happening, you, like you should go to these, you know, to, to legislative matters or, or, um, Finance, and then at some point, I, you know, I, I had the thought, well, if it's a if full council, is that truly invested in it? Then why are we taking it out to subcommittees? But you answered that question. You're right. There's, there's, um, there's a lot of work there. So, but I also really um, am taking in what Member Baskin is saying that there might be times in which we want to look at that differently. Um, and I wasn't aware, of, you know, of, I didn't or I didn't really understand the rules around legislative matters and public hearings and maybe the answer to some of this is that we don't automatically you know kind of descend everything off the legislative matters if if there's times in which the full council really wants to be a part of it but yeah are there any other yeah um councilor foster Councilor karen <laughs> i like Councilor karen it has a i do too <laughs> into it um, um, so I got really distracted because it, it's a long story, but the rest of my family's last name is Cannon and I'm pondering a name change. So then I was like, I could be Councilor Karen Cannon. Like, anyway, that is not the point of this. Um, well, and I can never be mayor because the mayor mayor is terrible. Ooh, easy to remember though, a good mnemonic. <laughs> my point is I wonder if we want to dedicate a meeting to committee structure, um, purpose and structure. So um, it's unwieldy. It's almost like um, a solicitor see well as you talk about like it's a blank slate and we can do what we want. In some ways that's really exciting. And in some ways that's, that's pretty, pretty like overwhelming. Um, but that, that might be an interesting um, topic for us to have to, to really consider if our committees are meeting the purposes we want them to, to meet or, or you know, the scope and the focus um, and whatnot. And I know we've touched it on it a little bit with community resources and city services, but I, I wonder if a, a sort of more holistic discussion would be in order. Um, yes, uh, Member Baskin. Yeah, I would love to go back to that. And um, I would also love to see if we could get some members of the public to attend that meeting specifically. Um, you know, maybe by announcing it at the next full council meeting, if it's after that. Um, I'd, I think it would be great to have more 
public engagement committees. I think that's one of the things we can discuss in that meeting. Um, and so I would, I would like to see that. And I'm interested in this thought about reducing the membership of committees to three and other, other ideas about the structure of committees. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Solicitor Seawall. Um, in that regard, you could always hold a public forum if you want to you really hear from the public, hold a public forum and invite people to come in and speak to you. It would be like, uh, you know, only a public comment session around limited to structure of committees and how they function. You always have the ability to do that if that's something you're interested in. And do the public public forum rules are like public hearing? You can can you do it back? I mean, the comment is is limited to the topic. But can you do back and forth with public like public hearing? Public, uh, public forum is whatever you want it to be. Um, okay. There's no rules around it. It's not a statutory requirement like a zoning hearing public hearing. It's not a public hearing. It's a public, I specifically do not call them public hearings because, you know, I don't want due process rights attaching to them. This is an informational session for this committee to hear from the public, period. Interesting. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Uh, I obviously hear the conversation. I'll remind everybody we had discussion and opportunities previously to deal with some of these matters and we chose not to. Um, uh, I want to call people's attention to the calendar uh, because we need to wrap up our work very soon if the current council is going to have any opportunity to review what we're doing. Um, because it really should be the current council that makes the decision on these recommendations. Um, since they impaneled us and uh, the new council is going to have multiple new people who won't know anything about this. So if we're looking at the calendar, and we have two meetings scheduled for November, and we would likely have two meetings scheduled for December, but it has to get back to the council in time for them to think about this. We really need to wrap everything up by the end of November. Uh, otherwise, it's not gonna happen. So I just ask people to keep that in mind. Thank you for that. So, are there, are there any other thoughts? I'm just looking at this agenda item. Are there any other thoughts around, um, I guess this, we've gotten off the topic exactly, but the structure of city council meetings and planning board and zoning matters, but um, any other, any motions or thoughts on that before we move on? If not, um, Let's move on and then we can check in at other business identifying remaining topics. Um, so let's see, making regularly scheduled performance reviews a requirement for the administrative assistant. This is something we uh, discussed, um, we discussed, but we'd never finalized. So that's why it's back on the agenda. Or maybe we didn't even discuss Laura. We, we, you and I discussed it. I don't know if we, I, I can't recall. Solicitor Seawall, did you have something to say? I was wondering whether you wanted me to stick around for the for any. Oh. These are the those were the two topics that Laura had told me you wanted me to be here for. I just want oh, uh, okay. want to know whether you want me sticking around or or yes. whether I'm dismissed to go eat dinner. I think wow, <laughs> everyone needs to eat dinner. No, I think that's I think that's fine. Uh, Solicitor Seawall, thank you, thank you for it's been Great. a very really valuable, I think, fruitful evening. So thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks. Good, good evening. Okay, so back to, yeah, so regularly scheduled performance reviews. Uh, Laura. I just thought it was a great idea that we missed talking about and something I'd welcome. And I was proposing just another amendment to, well, I, I'm not, you know, the, I was suggesting that we just amend rule 2.3.7 further, which um, member Simon had amended at the last meeting because that's the rule that says that gives the council president the responsibility to hire the administrative assistant to the city council and to supervise the individual in that position. Generally, we could just add comma to include conducting an annual performance evaluation if um, members agreed that might be a good idea. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. 
Yeah, so this is one of the this is one of the items that I had on my list. Uh, um, so I'm, I obviously think it's a good idea because I came up with it, but um, I think what you're seeing is your employee thinks it's a good idea. Um, <laughs> and that, that should carry some weight. Um, you know, I asked her the question, do you even get reviews? And the answer was no. So uh, it would simply be a simple addition to one of the rules already to make it a requirement if you wanted to do that. Member Baskin. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. Thank you both. And um, I think it's given the shifting nature of the city council president and the fact that that individual may or may not have any supervisory experience, I think the more mm -hmm. we put some guardrails in just to make sure that basic things like a performance review are happening, that seems really good to me. I definitely would want, I, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. that's all. That's a really good point, Member Baskin. And I'm just um, getting a little, I guess I haven't had my dinner, but who would do the performance review? I think we talked about that, but I now I can't remember. Did we talk about who would who would design the performance review, Laura? I was just assuming it'd be the council president since it's already their responsibility to generally supervise okay. the, the administrative assistant. Yeah, I would hope that we would get input from the whole council as well, but yeah. I was, I have to say, Laura, I was surprised to hear that you would want, it, want that. I don't like performance oh. reviews my children give me, but no. I see that you, why you see, they see it as valuable. Yeah, I had them regularly in South Hadley in the town administrator's select board office. And, you know, it just provides constructive criticism um, that you're able to improve if so. Right. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. I'll just quickly state that children are terrible employees. And <laughs> <laughs> they should yeah. have the same the matter. But um, I actually just wanted to propose an amendment or um, a motion to for us to continue to discuss. So this would be a, a motion um, to amend uh, Rule 2.3.7 uh, to simply add the following language uh, and will conduct an annual performance review. Second. Second. Member Baskin. Uh, Laura, any discussion? Uh, Laura? Roll call? Roll call, excuse me, roll call. Um, Council Mayori? Yes. Member Simon? Yes. Member Baskin? Yes. And Member Foster? Yes. Excellent. So that passes unanimously. Okay, so on the other business and identifying remaining topics. So the framework is we're thinking about four more meetings unless we schedule more, um, just the framework. So with our next meetings being November 9th and November 22nd, I believe, or 23rd. Um, we've talked about some topics here. Do we wanna review? Um, talked about possible public forum or outreach. We've talked about onboarding and culture, and we've talked about committee structure. Are, are, um, any, any other, I guess, any new topics and or any confirmation on these topics? Yeah. Uh, uh, Councilor Foster and then Member Baskin. Councilor Mayori, what other topics do you have that you're plan that um, are still need agendas? So I think we are pretty much wrapping it up. We don't, the next thing would be, and I want to allow time for it, is kind of the report writing. And also we, we do have, you know, we can revisit some of our recommendations. For example, how long public comment is, or we can revisit those. And so I want to allow a little time for that and for the report, you know, for, um, you know, for, because we, I think we've all kind of learned on the way. So if anyone wants to revisit a vote or recommendation um, that we can, we can do that. And also we need to write this report um, or at least to prove it, you know, uh, I can write it, but we can, we, we need to discuss and, 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 and uh, prove it. Yes, member Baskin. Yeah, I, I think we're wrapping up and I'm mindful of what Vester Simon said about time, which is I think very important. Um, I, think that I feel pretty good about what we've done in terms of review of the existing rules. I think questions about culture and orientation would be 
potentially sort of more new rules if we were to add anything around that. So I do think it would be interesting to have a meeting to consider, particularly I would be invested in enshrining something about orientation um, of the council. So that that would be interesting. Um, I think it would be great to review all of our recommendations if we were able to have, um, if Laura, if it was possible to pull together all the motions that had passed into a document that could be sort of reviewed and we could just have an agenda item to review previous recommendations and revisit any of them as needed, um, that would be great. And then I think if we are able to have time to, to return to committees, I do think we've gained some more insight into that. So I think it could be worth returning to, um, keeping time mindful. Um, and the report writing piece, I'm not clear how we do that exactly. I'm not clear if we delegate that to a specific member or if that we each take sections of it or I don't know what's typically done with that, but I do think we need to engage with that for sure. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Right, so I'm thinking along the same lines. So what, what I was thinking of is we actually have uh, two different types of suggestions. We have the actual modification to rules for which he's taken motions on. And then we have these topics of culture um, where it's not rule specific, but we've identified certain practices and members have identified certain practices they don't like and think should change. So my suggestion was that that would be two separate agenda items for one of our meetings. One is review um, proposed recommendations, right? And then we would ask Laura to assemble them all, uh, everything we took a vote on. And then another topic would be uh, reviewed, review other recommendations, right? And that would be for the cultural stuff that is not a specific um, uh, rule change. Um, and as far as a report, I mean, obviously nothing is specified as to the form it takes, but it could be something as simple as a list of our final votes, our final uh, rule change recommendations, right? And say from the select committee, here are our recommendations for rule changes. And then we send that on. So that wouldn't take a lot of um, writing or creativity to put together, simply just be a list. Um, and if we could actually, um, if we could actually get that a little bit in advance of the next meeting, there might even be time then to have another agenda item for some other things that you at least want to start um, to talk about um, that when items come back then to the council, members of this committee can say, well, we didn't have time to finish this, but we started looking into this and we think the council should continue discussion, right? Because this doesn't have to be the only attempt to change rules. It doesn't have to stop here. Um, so if we haven't, didn't have time, we could start stuff, let the council know, and then it'll be up to whoever the incumbents are on the council who want to pursue it to continue with some sort of rule change process. That's my suggestion. Yeah. Um, Member Baskin and then Councillor Foster. Yeah, I like that. I would. I think the report, the simpler, the better. I don't want us to write a many page report. I think that would be not a useful use of time. Um, but I do think it would be great if the report had two sort of parts, one about the rule changes and then one about sort of cultural recommendations. Hmm. I'd like to see both of those represented in a report, but I agree it can be not, it can also be textured in discussion as I imagine we would discuss it in a council meeting, presumably be recognized to discuss it if it's similar to other reports that I've seen. Um, yeah, uh, Councillor Foster. Thanks. Um, yeah, back to, I guess I wanna pick up the committee discussion a little bit and I understand the time pressures. And I also you know, see that that's something we could take up um, in a future council, although I, I would like to dedicate a little bit of time to it. Um, to Solicitor Seawald's recommendation regarding a public hearing, I guess where I'm stuck a little bit is, um, I think it would be great, but actually with a more general, broader focus that would take time to put together. So it would be appropriate in a, in a next council um, or in another term. But I think the question we'd be getting at for the members of the public is, what are your barriers to participating in council meetings, you know, what, what's confusing, what works, what doesn't work, what's going well. As far as, I mean, that's so in the weeds that I would, I would wonder or expect a number of people wouldn't, wouldn't even feel as though that was a conversation they could participate in. 
but a broader a broader hearing um i think is 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 an interesting one and, and one i'd be interested in um picking up that ball in a future term um as far as a report or recommendations i think a really good format may be to propose new council rules with changes highlighted um a list of recommendations is one thing but um if we have that in the format of council rules uh, where we can see what's been crossed out and what we have added and changed, I think that would provide uh, a, a deeper context for the other counselors rather than just a list of recommendations because there might be something in there that they you know they hadn't thought of or you know I, so that's just my recommendation. And then I love the the conversation regarding culture, um, and I, I um, think you know well-run organizations articulate their culture. And, um, you know, that that may not be something we do over the month of November, but, um, you know, to start that conversation and start being intentional about our culture on city council can help new members integrate and returning members perhaps sort of realize their role in, in what culture is being perpetuated and what culture do we want. Well, I'll just comment that I'm just so grateful for both of those comments because, um, yeah, I mean, to make a report useful and not just, you know, to make it actually uh, something someone wants to pick up and refer to is, and I think, I think your suggestions are excellent. And, um, and Council Foster, that, um, yeah, that's, I, I really appreciate that, what you said. I mean, I think there's, there, you know, we might, have time to, to touch upon, you know, to have culture as a um, agenda item next time. I think, I think yes, we, we are under time pressure. And so we just have to, to think about that. But I, I think we still do have time for, um, to look at um, some of the committee structure and new roles slash culture. And also, it, we, yeah, so there's really three things I'm seeing. There's a committee structure, there's new roles and culture you know, new roles we might propose or new cultural standards or such. And then the review, the third is the review of, of our recommendations and our votes, and then the report. So that's, it's a, it's a lot, but I, I feel like we could do that. I'm tempted to, you know, depending on the will of the, of the, the committee, I think um, we could cover those. Yes, member Baskin. Yeah, I like that. I think that three more things is manageable. Three. And in our next two meetings, um, that feels, and I think we could have up to three more meetings before we reported to the, the council if we reported in the second December meeting, um, which I think would be my preference um, just for my own schedule. Okay. Um, second December meeting, okay. Which is the 16th of December, I believe. Thank you, so organized. Okay, uh, yes, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, I think the time they might be a little tighter if there's going to be two readings of this. It, it, it'll probably take two meetings to finish this by the by the city council, which would mean we'd have to finish by the end of November, so they'd have it in December. Um, Councillor Foster, I, I my understanding, I'm, I'm I, I wouldn't expect um, I wouldn't expect us to need two readings because these are the rules to be adopted by the next council. So uh, my, my thought is that this is more of a discussion with the current council, but it's actually the next council that would adopt these rules. Like that's the, that's the very first thing we did was ad adopt our council rules. I also think adoption only needs one reading according to the adoption and amendment of the rules is one of those things that only needs one reading in the current rules. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna come back to this suggestion that it really needs to be the current council that adopts the rule changes because the, the new council is going to be clueless or half of it will be will be clueless about this um so i would i would expect that the current council would make the changes and then that those rules would be presented to the new council and i mean when you're brand new you're not gonna you're not gonna be thinking about changing rules and then they'll have some time to obviously get used to things and if they decide they want to change things they can you know, they can change them. Uh, well, I guess I'd go back to Member Baskin's point about adoption, but let me, Councilor Foster, why don't you go? Excuse me, I can see your hand. Right, yeah, if we only need one vote, but I guess we might be saying the same thing and just using a little bit different words. I think the current council would discuss 
and make recommendations or say, no, I hate this thing. I like this thing. It would be a council discussion. Um, that is, I mean, if we want to talk about culture <laughs> rules change, we were presented <laughs> with the council rules like within minutes of, of walking into council chambers and voting to adopt them. I mean, that's that's how it went in January of 2020. I was like, like there was no opportunity for any kind of input or discussion. And the question that was asked was, uh, how do we have input here? And it was change the rules. So I think that the current council's input is incredibly valuable. I, I not sure I feel that strongly that the current council needs to adopt the rules because it's the next council that will be operating under these rules, but I want the current council's input. I wouldn't want to move forward with something that they thought was a terrible idea. Yeah, Member Paskin. We could also ask in the discussion that new councilor elects be, um, be recognized. Um, we could invite them to that council meeting and it could be a discussion between our committee, the current council and the next council. Um, you know, pending people's availability um, that I think it would be great to have everybody talking together about it. Cause I agree. I think that the, yeah, that's an interesting, I really do want to talk about orientation at our next meeting as well. I know it's not on the agenda, but I would love to hear about what currently exists in terms of orienting counselors, if anything, and um, how we might make that process better. Cause it does to just be thrown into this and not have any sense of it and then ask to adopt rules that you haven't read like you know that it's not an auspicious start maybe yeah um, it, it's it's bleak Ezekiel I'll tell you it's bleak <laughs> there's not much onboarding and um yeah I, I think that would be an interesting discussion and I, I like that idea of the Alex um this is great stuff I think I'm really proud of what, what we've done here I think it's uh, I think, you know, I understand the time constraints. I think we have time for these, top, these topics we've identified. And um, maybe simultaneously, you know, Laura and I could be working on the um, review of recommendations so that we're ready to go. Um, but yeah. So I will put those, uh, I plan to put those on the agenda um, for the November 9th meeting. And um, is there any other thoughts, uh, uh, you know, any final thoughts on any of this identifying of topics or topics covered? We did a great job getting through the ones we, we, we put down, so I'm impressed. Okay, well, I would entertain a motion if there's no other comments. Yes, as Ekiel, a member Baskin. Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. And Member Foster. Yes.